Hi there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you five unique artist hacks that I like to use in the studio that are very helpful and make painting so much more enjoyable. Whether you're a beginner or you've been painting for some time, this video is for you. If you find this helpful, give it a thumbs up, click like, and subscribe. So, let's get into it. So here I'm going to pick out one of my favorite brushes and this one, nah, I think I want this one. Don't you just love it when that happens? Here's a budget friendly storage solution that I got at the local Dollarama. I think it was three or four dollars. I love putting my brushes in here because it won't flip over. The bottom is flat and also there's a little storage area over here that I can put pencils, sharpeners, erasers, whatever have you. So I like to arrange the brushes by size. I've got my taller brushes in this one, my mid-size in here, and my little brushes here. And here, nice and organized. And I can put pencils and pens, whatever have you, in here. And there you go. Rather than throw these empty pasta jars into the recycling, I'm going to upcycle these and put my brushes in them. I can hold all sorts of brushes in here and I'm going to take a little bit of duct tape, put a layer around and secure it and that way it won't fall over. There you go. All done. You can even paint these different colors if you wanted to. Um, maybe put some funky duct tape around it. That might be. Hack number two. This is a really great storage solution for your paint. So I have this piece of scrap plywood lying around. It's about three quarters of an inch thick, 24 inches by 24 inches. You can actually make it any size you want. Um, in order to fit the paint tubes that I'm going to show you, I have um, put screws in every six and a half inches and they are two and a quarter inches apart. And what I've done was I decided that I wanted to prime the front white because it looks nicer in my studio. And I've attached a wire on the back so I can hang this on my wall. So in order to hang my paints, I needed to buy a bunch of these binder clips that I got from the dollar store. Can you tell I love the dollar store? And what I'm doing is I'm attaching the binder clips to the bottom of the paint tubes, like so, and then I attach it onto the screws. So I'm just going to do a few of them here and I'll show you what it looks like. So here we are. Um, this is great for the 37 mil size paint tubes. I can keep track of what I have and how much paint I have and I can arrange them by warm and cool colors and maybe put the earth tones down at the bottom, whatever. Um, I think it looks nice and tidy and it makes it easier to find your paint. Who wants to spend a half an hour looking around your studio for that one tube of paint that you misplaced? Hack number three. Has this ever happened to you? This is hard as a rock. My little four-legged muse came into the studio right after I finished priming my plywood board that I hung all my paint tubes on and demanded that I walk him. So yeah, that's what I did. I put my brush down and I left it there and I forgot to wash so, it out. If you're like me and you've left your brush out and you forgot to wash it and put it to bed and tell it a bedtime story like you should, um, what you need to do is get yourself some rubbing alcohol. If you don't have rubbing alcohol, I got this uh, hand sanitizer gel, which is alcohol as well. And I have a jar and I have a piece of cardboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a square. And I'm going to cut a little X through it and 
then I'm going to take this jar and I'm going to fill it up just about up to there with a hand sanitizer gel. So now I've got my jar about halfway full. I don't need it fill, filled to the top. I just wanted to cover the bristles. So when you put your brush into the jar, make sure that the bottom of the bristles aren't resting on the bottom of the jar because you're going to eventually bend the bristles and then you have an additional problem as well. So that's why I've got this brush sitting here in the hand sanitizer and I'm going to let this sit for, I would say, I'm going to check it in a half an hour. So I've had this um, sitting in the hand sanitizer solution for probably an hour, hour and a half. Um, and let's see what's going on with it. You can see that the brush is getting soft and the paint is starting to come out. So I'm just going to swirl that around and go on the bottom and try to work a lot of that paint out. I'm stirring it around and it's, I can't believe how soft this is. It's crazy. I'm using a wire brush and I'm just going to comb it through. So I've just finished giving this a bit of a rinse in the water but there's still some paint debris stuck inside the brush. So I got this cute little um, brush washer from the dollar store. It looks like a little bathtub you'd put a Barbie doll in it and it's pink. So how could I resist? So here we go. I'm going to pour a little bit of Murphy's oil soap in here. And here we go. And I'm going to swish it around. You can see that paint is coming out even more. So once I've rinsed my brush out several times, I like to take a microfiber cloth, place the brush in here and give it a gentle squeeze. I don't pull because that loosens the bristles. Then I take my microfiber cloth and I lay it down on my music stand. And what's the music stand for? That's another video. Anyway, I like to take my brush and lay it down on an angle. This drains all the moisture out of the furl because if you place it like this, you're going to get the water running into the furl and it deteriorates the glue and causes the hairs to come out. So that's a good tip to remember. Place it on an angle, just leave it, come back to it the next day or several hours later. It'll be dry and good as new. So here's my brush. I left it overnight and I can't believe how soft this is. It's like a brand new brush. I'm glad I didn't toss it in the garbage. Okay, hack number four. Have you ever bought a canvas from the art store or the dollar store and you come home and it looks great and you take it out of the packaging and you have... So I don't know if you can see some of this rippling or not, but... Um, this happens quite frequently when the canvases are stacked on top of each other in the art store or whatever. So the solution is to get yourself a stiff brush or perhaps a credit card, a spray bottle with warm water, and this is totally fixable. So what I'm going to do now is flip this upside down and I'm going to spray the back of it with some warm water. And what this is doing is, rea is reactivating the, um, the glue in the canvas. So I make it nice and wet. And then just get a brush and work that water into the canvas. And then I'm going to let this dry for about 10 minutes and it should be tight as a drum. So I waited about an hour, took the dog for a walk, came back and 
my canvas is nice and flat. It's perfectly flat and listen to this. Tight as a drum, no ripples anywhere. So that's how you do it. For my fifth and final hack, I'm going to show you how you can make your own mall stick. This is very useful to keep away little dogs that are trying to maul you. Actually, this is a tool that sign painters use to steady their hands while lettering. This one actually screws apart for easy storage and when you're traveling. So today I'm going to show you how you can make your very own for a fraction of the cost using a piece of half inch doweling that you get at the hardware store. And then, so at the very end, I'm going to use something that's called a rubber leg foot and just cover the end of it. So when I do use this, it won't slide out of the um, bracket that I'm making to support it on my easel. So using a piece of foam core, or you could use a piece of cardboard, I'm going to cut out a bracket that I like to stick to the side of my canvas and this will support the mall stick. So what I'm going to do now is I put a piece of hard plastic underneath the foam core so I don't cut into my table and I'm just going to trim this down So I have something that looks like this and you can see these circles. I'm going to scallop these out now using an X-Acto blade and at the end I will um, put the dimensions in the comments below. So now I'm cutting out these little tiny circles. And they just pop right out. Now I have my bracket cut out of foam core. I'm going to stick it onto the side of my canvas. This is a gallery canvas by the way. So I have a couple of clamps and I'm going to just go over here on the side and stick it from the back. One and two. And so now I have my bracket Clamp to the side of my gallery canvas. I'm going to grab my mall stick, place it anywhere I like, and I have my brush and my hand is nice and steady. It's not shaking. I can go paint over wet areas without having to worry about smudging things. I don't have to rest my hand on the canvas and smudge my lines or my paint. So what do you think? Are you going to try it? Let me know in the comments below what you Thanks think. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell so you'll be notified of my next video coming up, all about brushes.